President. Please be seated. The court is now in session. Today, the chamber will hear testimony of a civil party that is to TCCP 252. And before we proceed with the hearing of uh, the testimony of the civil party, the chamber will grant the floor to defense counsel Victor Copper regarding his request and submission. As well as the inclusion of uh, his new uh, submission. Ms. Jiechi Huang, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings. Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. Mr. Nunji is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the Grafji, a civil party who is to testify today, that is to TCCP 252, is ready to be called by the chamber. Thank you. President, thank you. Ms. Jiexiu Huang. The chamber now decides on the request by Nguyen Chia. The chamber has received a waiver from Nguyen Chia dated 17 September 2015, which notes that due to his health, headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his right to participate in and be present at the 17 September 2015 hearing. Having seen the medical report of Nguyen Chi by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC, dated 17 September 2015, which notes, notes that Nguyen Chi has chronic back pain and cannot uh, sit for long, and recommends that the chamber grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the Chamber grants Nuji his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs via audio visual means. And the Chamber instructs the AV unit personnel to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nuji uh, can follow it. And this applies uh, to the whole day. The Chamber would like to hand the floor to Council uh, Copper to provide initially your uh, submission regarding your intention to provide the, uh, your actual uh, submission. And please uh, indicate to the Chamber how much time that you anticipate uh, for, the, uh, for your submission. You may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, Council. Um, I anticipate between 10 and 15 minutes. You may proceed then. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. President, um, two days ago, uh, the international co-prosecutor um, Mr. Nicholas Kunjan filed a request uh, to call three additional witnesses in respect of the treatment of the charm. Uh, that request uh, was signed by him only, no signature 
of the National Co-Prosecutor Chia Lang appears on the document with number E366. Um, two of the three witnesses uh, mentioned in E366 had already been requested uh, by both the international co-prosecutor and the national co-prosecutor. They had done so on the 9th of May 2014. And that is also why uh, two of the three witnesses uh, were given DCW numbers. One is two TCW 938 and one is two TCW 894. Now the most important one seems to be T, uh, 2 TCW 938. This witness um, has already uh, testified in this very courtroom before the chamber in case 002-01. That was in early 2012. Uh, Mr. President, I'm being a, a bit vague as to the exact date in order to ensure that I do not reveal the identity of uh, the witness. Um, in the request from international uh, co-prosecutor Kumjan, we can read uh, that 2 TCW 938 has testified uh, another five times in case four. And this testimony was gathered in 2013. And that evidence was um, subsequently placed on the case file of case four uh, in December 2014. It was then uh, disclosed to the defense and other parties in our case in February 2015 and admitted into evidence on 17 July 2015. However, the Chamber has had decided in August uh, 2015, last month, uh, not to summons to TCW 938 and to uh, TCW 894. According to the international co-prosecutor, these two witnesses can now offer, quote unquote, critical evidence of the existence of a plan to systematically destroy the charm uh, as a group, um, as well as, quote unquote, details of how the plan was passed down the hierarchy from sector 41 to the district uh, and commune levels for implementation." Unquote. According to the international co-prosecutor, the evidence goes to, I quote again, a central issue in this case, whether the mass killings of the Cham people were conducted pursuant to a policy of the CPK leaders, unquote. Accordingly, uh, to TCW 938 and the other witness to TCW 894 are in the view of the international co-prosecutor, quoting again, perhaps the two most important witnesses for this trial segment, uh, unquote. Considering the, uh, quoting again, significance of the evidence as well as uh, the centrality of this evidence to the critical issues uh, behind the targeting of the charm and other groups. It is in the view of the international co-prosecutor, quote, imperative to summon these witnesses. Uh, now, having summarized um, this request, we have first two requests for clarification. Um, as I just said, um, two TCW 938 has already testified in this courtroom. And as I said, this witness was subsequently requested by both the international and national co-prosecutor in case 002-02. The question that I'm, uh, that, I seek, uh, that I'm seeking clarification of is why is it now only the international co-prosecutor requesting to summons this witness? I would like uh, to inquire today with the national uh, co-prosecutor why it is that she, Chia Lang, 
did not co-sign the E366 request. What has changed between um, May uh, 2014 and now? Mr. President, I would also like to know from the national, the national co-prosecutor if, according to Cambodian law, it is legally possible for the international co-prosecutor to request the trial chamber to summons a witness without, I presume, the apparent consent of the national co-prosecutor. Now, Mr. President, the defense realizes that in the segment on Krang Tachan, District Secretary Boon, you might remember her, was requested only by the international co-prosecutor. But that was, we believe, a different situation uh, because she had never testified before in case 002, uh, let alone appear in this courtroom during the 002-01 trial. Um, in addition to this, the national co-prosecutor has first uh, jointly asked for two TCW 938 with her international counterpart, and now all of a sudden, uh, not anymore. And of course, also the fact that we didn't raise this issue with uh, witness Boone at the time uh, doesn't, of course, mean we cannot raise this legal matter uh, now. So my request, Mr. President, is to the national co-prosecutor to please explain to us um, what the law is so that we can revisit uh, the issue when we file our written uh, submissions uh, in response uh, to the request. The second point um, we seek clarification on is with the international co-prosecutor. Uh, why, is the question, why file this request now? Why so late? Why ask for these witnesses now when we are in the middle of hearing evidence on what allegedly uh, happened with the charm in part of Sector 41? Mr. International Co-Prosecutor, you have been sitting on this evidence as early as December 2014, and um, we would really appreciate an explanation. Um, we actually find it quite incredible that uh, so long uh, was, waited, was waited. And having heard your answer today, uh, we would be happy to uh, then incorporate your answer into, again, our written submissions. And that, Mr. President, brings me to an even uh, for more fundamental issue, and that's the following. Um, I shall be honest, <laughs> as I'm always, um, but this time even a little bit more. We didn't see the request, this particular request from the International Co-Prosecutor coming. We were actually completely taken by surprise. Of course, in theory, we could have known the existence of this evidence that the international um, prosecutor calls so critical and crucial. But the truth is, we didn't. In the tsunami of 8,155 pages coming from the approximately uh, 500 individuals who have given testimony uh, in case four and which have been uh, disclosed to us since the beginning of the second trial against our client, it was simply buried. Uh, it hadn't come up, <laughs> excuse me, it hadn't come up in our uh, PDF searches. And um, as a matter of fact, our one uh, and only international intern had literally stumbled upon the evidence of two TCW 938, literally half an hour before the notification of E366. Now the question of course is why is that, how is that possible? It's possible simply because up until now we have not been able to really read 
those 8,000 plus pages. The only thing we can do and have been doing so far is uh, do dedicated word searches in uh, these thousands of pages. We do not have the time uh, or the resources to read this flood of case four evidence, case 004 evidence. Mr. President, as you are well aware, uh, we are having a relentless trial schedule with no breaks between the segments. For instance, there was literally zero pause between the segments on the work site, segment on the work site and the segment on uh, the treatment of the charm. <clears throat> In addition, and maybe even more important, we are also in full preparation for the upcoming appeal, hear appeal hearings. Only last Friday, uh, we filed probably one of our most important submissions uh, since 2008 uh, with the Supreme Court Chamber. It was a highly densely formulated request that took us considerable resources to write. Um, I'm not sure if I'm right now, but uh, I think we do take some comfort from the fact that it appears that also the trial chamber itself might not have seen the request from the international co-prosecutor coming. Otherwise, I presume both 2 TCW 938 and 2 TCW 894 would surely have made it to the witness list uh, regarding uh, the segment of the charm. Uh, Mr. President, what I'm saying is, uh, in fact, that we are pulling the emergency brake. Uh, we simply cannot do it anymore. Either we are given uh, extra resources immediately, or we should stop hearing evidence on the charm right now and you allow us to really read and process the evidence from case four. And more importantly, actually discuss, uh, enable us to discuss the evidence with our client and get his input, uh, which we still have not been able to do. And that, Mr. President, brings me to my last point. Um, and that is also a very important point. While we are hearing evidence, today, yesterday, last week, as to what happened to the charm uh, in one particular district in Sector 41. The investigators in case 004 are now, as we speak, questioning apparently crucial witnesses in relation to one of the suspects in case 004 uh, are on. They are investigating, right now, genocide charges against him in relation to Sector 41. The very Ta'an to whom two of uh, the witnesses this week uh, were referring to in their testimony. So what, ale what allegedly happened in, uh, at Wat Otrakun is part of that case 004 investigation right now. And um, allow me to refer you to paragraphs 23 uh, to 25 of the case 004 introductory submissions regarding Ahn. They're not part of the case file, but you can find these submissions um, in the public domain on internet. So the investigators in case 004 are apparently looking for evidence to establish the existence of a genocidal policy against the charm in Sector 41. They are looking at other districts in Sector 41. They are looking at other security centers in Sector 41. They are looking at the hierarchical structure in Sector 41, both downwards from the sector to the districts and communes, and upwards from the sector to the Central and Standing Committee of the CPK. It is very possible that there is uh, exculpatory evidence being gathered today, or maybe even yesterday, or maybe tomorrow. Now, Mr. President, we believe that there is a crucial difference with the Trapping Tma Dam worksite in the Northwest Zone. You know that there were also kinds of issues about the evidence coming uh, from case four in relation to this worksite. The crucial difference is we have not been disputing 
uh, the existence of the dam. We have not been disputing the, the decision by our client and others to have that particular dam or the first January dam built. Now, of course, we didn't present our documents at the document hearing, but if we would have, it would have been clear to you, to all of us, uh, that we are not disputing a policy to build dams and work sites. However, we are strenuously disputing the existence of a policy um, of genocide against the Cham. Therefore, Mr. President, and I'm rounding up, we request to stop hearing evidence on the Cham in respect of what Otakun in Pimchi commune until the investigation against An has been closed and all relevant evidence has been disclosed and seen by the defense. Alternatively, we, we request that the chamber only hears evidence on the treatment of the charm in the former east zone, since uh, that zone is not part of the investigation against An. One last remark. Um, in addition, please be informed, Mr. President, that uh, we are we will soon be requesting uh, to hear additional witnesses in relation to the treatment of the charm in the east zone. That request is almost finished, and we will circulate a, uh, a courtesy copy probably um, coming Monday. Um, but that's a side of the main issues uh, that I would like to raise in relation to um, the request from the prosecution, from the international uh, co-prosecutor two days ago. Thank you. President, thank you, Council, and International Council for Kiev's Support, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning um, to all parties um, here present. Uh, as I said, or as I indicated by email yesterday, we do not wish to address uh, the co-prosecutor's uh, submission in substance. We would, we would do it in writing. However, I have to make a few remarks given uh, what uh, my colleague Kope has just uh, told us because there's obviously a direct uh, connection with the latest submissions that we filed. In particular, our submission on uh, the co-prosecutor's co okay. obligation of disclosure, E363. So we are now exactly in, uh, well, we are at a key moment uh, in uh, the proceedings because the fundamental question is how are you going to continue with the trial if day after day there's continuous introduction of new elements coming for, from an investigation in the process? What uh, our colleague Kope has just said, we already said the same in our submissions about the massive amounts of documents uh, that uh, we cannot uh, review. But beyond the practical issues, there are issue issues of principle. In a trial, can we integrate in the process elements uh, from an investigation that is not yet closed? It's a substantial problem. It's a problem that is going to come up during the entire trial, in fact, if we do not find a true solution to it. So our submission E363 aims at finding a solution that would allow us uh, to avoid uh, delays uh, in this trial and which would allow us also to abide by rules uh, in a trial that was the subject of an investigation. And I'd like to refer you to the, our last uh, submission when we address the prosecution, which is, is what is what the co-prosecutors are telling us by introducing elements that are that they say are capital, but that were not uh, uh, reviewed in the case of the investigation? Then we have an issue. Does this mean that the investigation was not properly done? Does this mean that the investigative work was not well done? 
even in case, or, you know, or th does this also mean that uh, the investigation of case 2-2 is also not completed? So what should we do then? So I will stop here. I will refer my chamber to our previous uh, submissions, and we will uh, answer in a detailed way uh, to the co-prosecutor's uh, submissions, it pursuant, of course, uh, to the internal rule. Thank you, Yudri. President Jaskali Fans, do you have the floor? Uh, just before we get the responses, because then it can perhaps be covered, I want to ask both counsel the same question. And this is only, I'm not touching on the legal issues. I'm not touching on the legal issues raised, but on the practical concerns. So that's basically the second issue counsel Copper raised, which is lack of time and or resources. Now, obviously the chamber can't uh, provide more resources. So my question is, have requests been made to the Office of Administration to get more resources? Um, numerous times, uh, but th th the answer is very clear, no. Uh, it's impossible. Um, there's no money. Um, we, we are in desperate need of, of extra staff uh, or consultants, uh, but um, it's impossible. And this has also covers recent times. So we well, I, yeah, I, I'd be happy to, to go every week to uh, uh, Mr. Endley's office, but you know, he says no, no is no. Okay. So my second question is um, time. You said you needed more time, specifically now when it comes to preparing the uh, Supreme Court hearings. Can you be a bit more specific as to, can you put a number to additional time? A number of days or whatever. Well, Judge Fans, I, I brought uh, the, the preparation for the Supreme Court chamber uh, or the appeal hearings. I brought that up because that's something that we're doing simultaneously. Um, obviously, when we uh, have hearings scheduled, um, the question arises whether we can even be uh, in, the, in, in this courtroom um, hearing evidence uh, on any subject. Uh, but up until now, we have not heard anything. So um, I suppose the million dollar question of today is also, when are we going to have the appeal hearings? But th that doesn't change the fact that we are preparing um, uh, on a daily basis uh, for the appeal hearings already. We've, we've, we've had the response of uh, the prosecution on our appeal. So we know probably what the issues for the debate are going to be. We filed, as I said, a sixth uh, additional evidence request. So we are fully busy with, uh, with prepping the appeal. Uh, and at one point, I don't think there will be even time to, to be busy in uh, case 002 slash 02 on the evidence, uh, up you know, close to, to possible appeal hearings. So this is the situation that we are facing. And, um, at council, I understand the overall problem, and uh, but we have to schedule. Obviously, as we have done before, we can adapt schedules. But as of today, and with what you know today, what, if any, additional time to prepare would you need? I understand this can change in three weeks or whatever, but we need to make a decision. If we want to accommodate you, it would be helpful to get your understanding on what you would need now. I understand what you're saying. Um, the problem is really that most of those 8,000 pages I haven't been able to read. Uh, it all, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's been seen by some uh, of our consultants, but it all has to go through me. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what I really should be doing uh, is read all those 8,000 plus pages. Uh, I don't know when I should do that. Uh, and I don't really know how long I need for it few weeks? I don't know. I mean, ultimately, I'm the only one always standing here. The prosecution has, I think, seven um, different prosecutors sitting there. Uh, I'm being in court every single day, and I don't really know when to read all those pages. So, I don't know, a few weeks.
present. You may proceed. Chacha Lavenge, you can now have the floor. Oui, je suis intéressé. Yes, I am interested in the reference to 8,000 pages because it, ap it appears to be spectacular, but Mr. Cooper, you should really understand that since the end of last year, perhaps in the month of November, and pro probably even before, the records from case four have been disclosed. <laughs> yes, but we have been in trial every day. Um, we, we were busy with the appeal brief until end of last year. Then we started trial. And, and like I said, it, uh, a tsunami was unleashed. I only have 24 hours in a day. Maybe you have more. I don't have it. Mr. Coupe, Mr. Coupe, if you would allow me, I would like to make a simple remark. Before the Supreme Court chamber, it appears that uh, you have re uh, referred to uh, records of interviews from case four, and you're telling us that you absolutely have not had any time to uh, acquaint yourself with those documents, and I'm absolutely stunned to hear that. No, I haven't been saying that. Uh, I mean, only two weeks ago, we, we filed an 87 request, uh, having six uh, case four WRIs admitted as evidence. Um, we, we filed a request with the Supreme Court chamber to have case four WRIs admitted. We can we, can, we, we have been reading it. We have been reading case for WRIs in relation to the dam. Uh, but have we been able to read all 8,000 plus pages in a coherent way? No. The only thing that we can do is do word searches and hopefully find whatever we are looking for. But we haven't been able to sit down and actually read uh, uh, coherently uh, all those pages from all those 500 individuals in case four, and that's the situation. President, you may now proceed to Council on Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before the prosecutors respond to all these arguments, I'd like to say, Mr. President, that in the course of these uh, proceedings, and uh, we've been dealing with cases three and four, I must say that I feel extremely ill at ease at the manner in which all of a sudden what is under the uh, supervision of the prosecution is now under the uh, supervision of uh, the defense. Uh, I'm uh, referring to so, uh, to do documents from the third and fourth cases. Uh, we have always asked for additional staff, and um, each time it's important for us to say that the, the, the impression is given is that the uh, defense is uh, dragging its feet and is asking for more resources, but we should understand that there are obvious procedural problems and we have to resolve them and as we've said in our submissions we have to look at the time allotted to the defense we have already sorted out the documents that we believe should be disclosed to the defense and to the chamber and, and that will be used by other parties that is first point and as regards that first batch of documents we would then be able to say that we need so much time if you are telling us that uh, as uh, case 002 slash 02 is proceeding, we'll receive um, a, a, a hodgepodge of documents that will be continually um, uh, poured onto the file. And uh, we have to deal with uh, documents from cases three and four that are still under uh, investigations. We would like to say that we have to wait for those investigations to be completed. So we have a serious procedural problem upstream and this problem has to be resolved. The problem is what ought to be disclosed in terms of exculpatory evidence um, relating to uh, witnesses who are to be called by the parties and the co-prosecutors. So we, we can rely on Rule 87, Paragraph 4 of the rules. We find ourselves in 
um, procedural imbroglio and we cannot cope with it as a defense. So once more, I am somewhat ill at ease to find that each time we have to justify ourselves on things that we haven't done and we've said on several occasions during these proceedings and also in our submissions regarding disclosure of documents how we would like to proceed. When there is a segment uh, before us, we try to do uh, some research relating to documents before us and documents that have already been tendered into evidence in principle or documents that are likely to be exculpatory and international case law shows that, that it is the co-prosecutors who should produce those documents. Today, I do very well understand that you need to understand yourselves in order to know how you proceed and how to, uh, hearings will be scheduled, how uh, the calling of new witnesses will, will be scheduled. So there are procedures that we have to follow and we've said so in our submissions. So if we are going to deal with documents coming from, uh, from cases three and four that are still being investigated, then we have serious problems and there are limits to what we can accept. I cannot accept that on each occasion the impression is given that uh, we, the Kyo Sampan team, have to justify that we need so much time, so many days, uh, without knowing exactly uh, on what basis we are asking for th these, um, the additional time because the documents are coming from investigations that are still on, uh, being conducted. To respond to Judge Fancy's uh, question, insofar as we haven't ha received a decision on the issue of disclosures, it would be very difficult for us to give you a number of days uh, that we'll need in concrete terms, it will depend on the number of uh, uh, statements that will be uh, disclosed and we believe this is uh, incumbent on the prosecution. It's up to the prosecution to make those disclosures. President. Do you have any further questions, uh, judges, on the bench before I give uh, the floor to parties to uh, present responses or submissions? If not, I now hand over the floor to the, the deputy co-prosecutor of the international side, followed by the co lawyer for civil parties. Thank you, Mr. President, Your Honours. Um, let me try to respond to everything we've heard today, which I must say sounds very much like a response to our motion. Uh, and that would be my first point. Um, we should not be interrupting the hearing of a witness for 40 minutes um, uh, and then uh, planning to file trial briefs uh, 10 days down the road. If the defense wish to argue this issue now, as they have, that's fine. Uh, but I don't think they should be getting two kicks at the can. Second, um, counsel asked to bring this issue to your attention yesterday morning. He had plenty of time to circulate an email giving us some advance notice of what it was uh, that he was going to ask the chamber. This is becoming a repeating thing, stunts by the defense counsel uh, without any notice uh, to the parties of the, the request. The stunt today included uh, uh, putting a question to the national co-prosecutor, uh, who's not here today. Uh, if he wished to put a question to the national co-prosecutor, um, and for, let me add that she is certainly under no obligation to explain the law to counsel, um, but uh, if he wanted her to be here, perhaps he should have told everyone in advance what he was going to ask for today. A second, we heard uh, an assertion uh, that we were late in requesting uh, these witnesses. Uh, that is simply and utterly false. 
Uh, as he noted himself, uh, we made requests uh, for uh, two of the witnesses in our May 2014 filing, and uh, the third witness is, is a new one that we have discovered. Um, your honors should take note that in uh, our May 2014 uh, witness list, uh, while the state of evidence that had been made available to us in case four uh, was not what it is now, uh, there was lower level cadres at that point who had started to come, come clean on the policy to identify and smash the CHAM people. Based on that, we included these witnesses. Since that time, the investigation has continued and commune chiefs and a district chief have now come clean and testified uh, to the existence of orders from above to identify and kill all the CHAM. Council uh, should have known of this evidence. I simply do not believe they were unaware of it. He says we buried this in a tsunami. Nothing could be further from the truth. The uh, interviews of the district chief, um, four were conducted in 2013, one in 2014. Interestingly, uh, they were not posted by the investigating judge until December 2014. All five of those interviews, obviously because of the sensitivity of the information being provided by this individual. When the inter interviews were posted in December 2014, we made a request, immediate request for authorization. When we got that authorization, they were disclosed in February 2015. And this is a very important point. We made a separate filing disclosure filing of just the five interviews of that district chief. If you go back uh, to the filing, the disclosure was of those five interviews only. Everybody knows who this person is and the importance of her. To stand here and suggest to the court that they were unaware of the importance of this evidence and that we tried to bury it is appalling. Judge Laverne has already pointed out um, that while they stand here and say they don't have time to review this, they seem to be doing quite a good job in the appeal proceedings where they are repeatedly filing new evidence requests based on these very same interviews, the case four interviews. They also use them in the trapping Tama segment. They use them extensively with witnesses in court without filing 87-4 motions, and that's fine from our end, including the Q Sempan defense team. Just a few weeks ago, she was in this courtroom questioning a witness in the Trapping Tomas segment using one of these interviews that now all of a sudden some great principle should prevent the court from looking at the truth. I don't think um, another point was made regarding the trial chamber. Uh, I don't think it is correct that these witnesses have been rejected. They weren't included in uh, the uh, initial uh, uh, selection of trial witnesses. Uh, it may be that the trial chamber was considering them more as policy witnesses. Uh, I'm not sure, but there has certainly been no ruling rejecting these witnesses, nor could I think that there could be. Uh, I don't think there can be any question about the importance of this evidence. The central issue here is why. Why were the Cham people rounded up and killed in these locations? This evidence will put an end to an academic argument that has been going on for years. Was there a policy? Yes. We now have people, district chiefs, who have provided evidence that there was a clear policy to identify and kill the Cham people in these core areas where they lived. 
And let me get to probably what the most important issue is, the procedure. The fact, the argument that there is an ongoing investigation and that therefore we should delay this segment. That, that is not different than other areas of the case. Council is, is right, this is a particularly key area of the case, but it is no different in any other area. Investigations will continue. We will continue to disclose interviews where there are new ones. And there is a procedure available should there be new significant evidence that either the defense or the prosecution wishes the trial chamber to hear. So there simply is no reason to stop this segment because there is an ongoing investigation. And we certainly uh, agree uh, where the defense, where reasonable requests are being made, the court should give the defense time where they need it. But I think to ask that we postpone the segment until the end of trial uh, is, is, is unwarranted. Um, moreover, we have only one more witness relating to the Kong Mias killings, which I think was what counsel was proposing, that we, we, we uh, proceed back to the, to the East Zone side, Kokomar. Um, we only have today's witness. so. I don't think asking that we postpone the Kong Mias part of this trial, where we have this one witness uh, left, uh, a victim, who will describe uh, what happened to the Cham people. I don't think that that is warranted. Uh, should the, the chamber uh, grant our request to hear these witnesses, they're not going to be heard for a while. I, I assume it would be not until sometime in October after the, after the break. Um, in my view, that's sufficient time. But uh, certainly, the, ch the chamber can consider uh, how much time the defense needs. Um, but I do want to make it very clear, there's, there should be no surprise at all about these witnesses. Um, I think that responds to Mr. Cope's points in regard to the Kusum Pan team. Um, again, um, you may have been wondering, as we are, uh, what, a brought, what brought about this recent uh, flip-flop from them, where they had been using these Case 4 interviews in court. They had not been opposing our requests to put them into evidence. And then all of a sudden, a few weeks ago, it becomes a matter of principle that uh, we must not hear any of this evidence anymore. I, I would submit that in all likelihood, at some point a few weeks ago, they became aware when they were preparing for the Cham case of these key interviews, this critical evidence that is obviously damaging to the defense. But put that aside, this court um, has an obligation to ascertain the truth. Both sides, prosecution and defense, have the right to request new evidence uh, where it meets uh, the criteria under the rules. This evidence uh, certainly does these new interviews. Uh, the defense have the right to oppose that. Uh, they didn't uh, when we put this evidence forward. Um, this is critical evidence, Your Honors, and uh, uh, as indicated in our motion, uh, we believe it's critical that uh, essential that the court hear this. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll stay on my feet, um, but I think I've responded to the defense my list of issues from the defense. President, thank you. You have the floor now. International lead call lawyer for civil parties. Merci, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. I would like to make a few remarks which would be a response to the motion by the International Court Prosecutor. We do not intend to make any written uh, response to this motion. Whenever we have had to discuss this issue, I have always presented our position, which is very peculiar in this case, which is very distinct in this case. And we support 
the work of the prosecution, but we do so autonomously. And the lead co-lawyers do not have access to cases three and four. And we therefore find ourselves in exactly the same situation as the defense uh, with regard to access to those documents. Bearing in mind, nevertheless, that we do not play the same role in this case. In all honesty, and to make sure that the chamber understands the difficulties that the parties may be confronted with, I am obliged to say that we did not anticipate that motion and uh, we did not take full cognizance of documents relating to uh, witness do to TCP uh, 258. I say so because it is important for the chamber to understand the uh, magnitude of the work that each of the parties have to do. Bearing in mind there are different uh, functions within the courtroom and outside of the courtroom and uh, for the lead co-lawyers, the work that we have to do outside of the courtroom is also particularly significant. We can therefore understand that the defense is asking for more time in order to take cognizance of those documents. We ourselves face difficulties in reading, digesting, and understanding the information that is disclosed while reiterating what we have always said since the very beginning of this trial, that it is in the interest of the civil parties to be able to continue to make progress in a regular manner while respecting the rights of each of the parties. We have never been opposed to any request made by any party as regards the summoning of a witness, we have always relied on the discretion and the wisdom of the chamber. And, and that is what we intend to do in the case of this particular motion. There is manifestly a recurrent problem and we all endure the consequences in this trial. At a point in time, we will need a verdict from the Supreme Court in case two, one, because that verdict would have direct consequences and the, there will be direct consequences between the decision of the Supreme Court and the proceedings that are on the way and the incidence of that on cases three and four before the end of the proceedings in case 002 slash 02. This said, I would like to react to one of the points made by our colleague, Mr. Cope, regarding Ta'an, because we, the civil parties, are interested, first and foremost, in the search for the truth. We have access to public information on the court website that Ta'an was charged not with uh, genocide, but crimes against humanity relating to religious persecution and crimes related to the Otra Kwon Pagoda, which we often refer to since the beginning of the segment on the charm. At a point in time, the chamber will have to ask itself the question whether Ta'an should be summoned to explain um, what happened in case 002-02. There is no procedural obstacle because the chamber uh, uh, can decide to summon Ta'an, who appears to have uh, chosen to cooperate with the court since uh, she was uh, not uh, investigated in abstentia, and in light of information on the site of the tribunal and the press communiques released, uh, she chose to be investigated. So there is no obstacle to the summoning of Ta'an by the chamber, bearing in mind the information that she appears to have in her uh, possession and which appears to be particularly relevant to the manifestation of the truth. Uh, as regards several segments of this trial, we are not making a motion, but we would like to uh, draw the, the Chamber's attention to this possibility. These are my remarks, Mr. President. Um, your honors, thank you for your kind attention.
President, thank you. Mr. Koppel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, let me first say that I'm quite pleased um, with the support from um, the lead co-lawyer for the civil parties. I'm quite pleased to hear that also they, despite their very good connections uh, with the prosecution, did not see that request coming. Um, uh, sarcastically, Mr. Lysak called our motions a stunt. Well, um, that really wasn't, and I'm very happy uh, that the lead co-lawyers are supporting us uh, in this respect now. Uh, they had no idea about the potential importance of this witness. And uh, I'm actually quite convinced, uh, Mr. President, that the trial chamber itself didn't have, um, or didn't see that coming either. So to just accuse us of some stunt is um, quite outrageous, I must say. And my second point, Mr. President, uh, it's all very nice uh, what the international co-prosecutor is saying, but I'm really interested in what the national co-prosecutor uh, has to say in, re in respect uh, to my re request for clarification. He is entitled um, to respond, I presume, on behalf of the Office of the National Co-Prosecutor. If uh, Mrs. Chia Lang is not there, we, we, we don't have any problem with this. Uh, he is uh, fully capable, I'm sure, in uh, giving the perspective of the National Co-Prosecutor. Um, so uh, I would really like to hear his view as to why they didn't sign, uh, didn't co-sign that request that we are now discussing. President Tishlaven, you had the floor. Council Kope, I would like to understand your request better. This request of clarification that you're addressing to the co-prosecutor, to the national co-prosecutor, do you wish to challenge uh, the validity of uh, the national co-prosecutor's request? I really don't understand, and I don't understand what the relevance is this uh, request with regard uh, to um, uh, the proceedings right now? Um, well, in our written submissions in response to this motion, um, we can only speculate as to the reasons of why the National Co-Prosecutor is not co-signing. Uh, we can have an idea, but uh, we really do not know. Uh, that's why in court, in the place where it all should happen, I'm requesting I have requested the, the National Co-Prosecutor um, if it's possible, according to Cambodian law, um, to even ask for a witness um, um, only by the International Co-Prosecutor. I remember uh, only two weeks ago, Judge uh, Fenz said when I walked away angrily, it doesn't matter as long as the national lawyer is here, it's all fine. But here we have a, a, a mirror situation. It's the international co-prosecutor uh, asking only for this witness, whereas before it was uh, a co-signed request. So um, I'm not. Maybe I, I have. Uh, I'm mistaken about Cambodian law, but I think it should be the national co-prosecutor requesting the trial chamber to call for a witness or to summons a witness. <laughs> President, I think the chamber is uh, rather confused now, and it seems that the parties uh, take turn uh, to be like a host on a TV uh, broadcast, a radio broadcast. I have instructed explicitly that each side should expressly submit their stance and observations, and then uh, the other party uh, can uh, proceed with a response. Now I'd like to ask about the uh, national deputy co-prosecutor if he has anything to say regarding this matter. National deputy co-prosecutor, Mr. President, what has been uh, raised by the defense team is in fact a response to our submission. For that reason, I am in no uh, way to represent the national deputy, uh, the national co-prosecutor to respond to his submission. He can do it in a writing. 
President, the Chamber thanks all the uh, parties involved for your responses and observations regarding the uh, submission by the international deputy co prosecutor uh, to hear new witnesses and uh, the new documents, as well as the the responses and the uh, submissions made by the two defense teams. They confirms that they will uh, provide their written submission. The one which is uh, they based in their observation and submission this morning, as well as uh, the upcoming ones in uh, next week also. And this will be used by the chamber as a basis for our deliberation. Certain issues uh, will be discussed and uh, overall rulings will be provided. However, for other complicated matters, we will uh, inform you of our decision in due course. It is now appropriate for our short break. We will take a break now and return at 20 past 10.